What's up guys, Dylan here, and today I'm gonna talk about the whole crypto crash and the Elon Musk tweet fiasco, at least if you believe in crypto. But before I get into that, like, subscribe, comment below. Um, if you're looking to learn about more about entrepreneurial activities, I got my Patreon channel in, in the comments or in the description. Uh, give that a join, it's like seven bucks a month. I'm gonna be sharing a lot of good, good content stuff on how to build a crypto business and um, be an entrepreneur, right? A lot of, talk about a lot of the opportunities, how to go about building your digital business, how to, you, how to be an advocate for the cryptocurrency industry. So with that said, clearly I am not sad about the crash. Maybe I'm a little bit. Uh, if you didn't know, the crypto market crashed, uh, I guess Bitcoin specifically crashed like 10 to 15% from last night to through throughout today. And the whole market, I think it's over three to $400 billion down um, over the course of the past day. So what happened? Well, the most notable thing that happened was Elon Musk, or Tesla, tweeted that Tesla will no longer be accepting Bitcoin as payment for its cars, citing environmental reasons, citing um, it's not a clean enough energy source, it's not produced clean enough, right? So therefore, they aren't going to accept it. Now, uh, taking at face value, you're like, oh, I didn't know Bitcoin was, um, you know, produced you know, that has a lot of carbon emissions. And if you look this up, a lot of articles are talking about the mining of Bitcoin, you know, has enough, it has as much energy or takes as much energy as sm these small countries and they'll list these small countries and stuff like that. But what does that mean? What is, the, is that even relevant is the question that you need to be asking yourself. Like, so what if it produces as much energy um, in a year as, as the country of the Netherlands, right? What does that even mean? You have to start thinking like what other areas, right? What other industries, um, what they produce, right? As a good or service and then the energy required to sustain them. And when you start looking at that, then the amount of energy required to sustain Bitcoin starts to seem less like a problem. And then if you start looking into the different types of energy sources, then it also becomes less and less of a problem, right? You'll, you'll learn that Bitcoin um, and a lot of crypto miners are actually using fuel that would normally be wasted. I had a buddy who worked for a oil company and he said they were selling one of their assets or trying to figure out what they want to do with their extra natural gas that they're producing. It was summer cold, right? Summer cold where they want to primarily produce oil. And they were trying to figure out what they want to do with this extra natural gas because they didn't really have the infrastructure set up to ship the nat to you know pump the natural gas to the pipelines. So what they were doing is they were just burning off this stuff. So it's called flaring and oil fields do this all the time, right? It happens if like you can't add more gas to the pipeline or if, you know, there's basically if there's more produced or the infrastructure isn't set up to handle it or it's not a certain grade or you, there's a lot of things that go into it. But so if you've ever driven by an oil field and you see like flares of gas popping up, um, that's flaring. And in some areas, it's a lot worse than others. Well, the Bitcoin people were like, hey, well, we'll just set up a mining facility and we can route your gas that you would flare to our mining facility and we'll use it as energy, right? Um, and th that kind of thing, that gas would be would have been wasted otherwise. So they're taking this wasted energy and they're using it to turn that energy into a monetary resource, which is pretty incredible when you think about that, right? Energy into money, right? Into an asset. That's pretty awesome that we are doing that. We created something that can do that. Like I just wanted that to sink in for you, right? Because that's like when I started thinking about this morning, like that's really mind blowing that we have created a system to turn energy into an asset. And that's pretty powerful, right? Something that can be utilized. Right? We've, you know, with oil and gas, oil has been on, in the ground, right? So we just access it and it takes energy to get that oil out of the ground. And then from that, we get the oil out and then we utilize that as energy. We sell that, um, but it's already packaged, right? We're, it's almost like we're a, um, crypto mining is almost like, um, it's almost like a renewable energy source in its own right. Because if you think this is a monetary system, this allows people to um, invest in things. This allows people to build wealth, right? To own assets that are valued across the, the world, right? This is some pretty powerful stuff when you really st uh, stop to think about it. So that's just something that they do. Um, crypto miners also, the energy that they use, right? these are arguments that are pro crypto. And I'd love to hear your um, arguments and comments about if you believe that it is a destructive um, industry or uses too much industry, in, energy, right? So these are pro crypto arguments. Let me turn my car off. I'm parked, by the way. So um, I like to do these videos after work or in the car because I'm here. I'm, I'm a captive audience, right? And I'm stationary and so I can do it real quick before I get distracted and, and so I can get them, get them done and inform you guys. Otherwise, you know, my dog might be like, hey, take me on a walk and, and then I'm taking her on a walk and not creating a video. So anyways, um, other things they'll do is, um, let's say, 
So they'll go and they'll use wasted energy um, or that would be wasted and they're turn they're putting it to good use. So this is energy that would be, would be wasted otherwise and now they're using it. That's pretty cool, right? Obviously that's not all the energy. Um, other things that they'll do, they're doing is the energy cost is one of the primary costs for these mining operations. Right? The cost of energy uh, determines how profitable that they'll be. So they go to areas where energy is a lot cheaper. Right? Unfortunately, sometimes the cheaper energy is um, you know, coal, which isn't as clean burning as other energies, but it's produced, right? And it's something that, um, that people need. And there are coal production facilities, and there is waste at those facilities, and they utilize that. And you know, if you like, it's it'd be ideal if we could operate without using coal. But there's certain areas of the world that that's like the fuel source that they need to have, right? And they have they have coal and they can do that, right? So that could be helpful for them and help them transition. So by getting this investment in these energy sources, um, countries can or places can transition to more uh, optimized energy sources, less carbon, um, I guess, less car carbon intensive, carbon heavy. Um, you know, less destructive energy sources. So um, that's something that they, they're doing. They also are driving innovation in the computing space, right? So they, they may, an argument against it is like, oh, well, they use these processors, they use them up, and that creates a lot of waste, okay? But they don't want their processors to, they want to reduce their costs. So they don't want their computer processors, their mining processors to burn out after a year. I think the time, the, the lifespan of a mining processor has increased um, from like a few months to now like a year and a half, something like that. Um, go look it up, right? Do your own research. I, I always advocate that. Don't take anything I say as the absolute truth. These are my, just my opinions, not financial advice or anything like that. But um, they're driving innovation in processors. So just think of the potential there, right? If they can drive more and more innovation in, in processors, right, that can have applications who knows, right? Who knows? I mean, we're, we're a very computer-heavy society. Right? A lot of things come out of that. So they're pushing the boundaries of innovation, and it does take some energy to do that. It, there is a cost to do that, um, but there's also gains that can be had from that. So those are some pros, right? I don't know the exact numbers, but I think people compared, you know, if you compared Bitcoin mining to gold mining, I think gold mining uses more energy um, and is more harmful to the environment to, than Bitcoin. Gold mining isn't um, you know, it isn't clean, right? There's a lot of mining that we do. There's a lot of things that we do that aren't clean. Um, getting supplies for to build Teslas, like the cars. There's a lot of dirty um, manufacturing and production things that go into those cars. So they're not the cleanest things in the world. Uh, most things we do, you know, if you look at a, a lens of like, is it is it like clean? Is it totally sustainable, or is it not? Well, most things we do aren't. But that's also sometimes we have to do things that are unsustainable to get to a point where we can be sustainable, right? Especially during transition periods when, if you think back to the Industrial Revolution, right, you know, the the, the invention of the steam engine and the coal-fired, um, I need to refresh myself on history, Industrial Revolution, um, all these factories popped up and we were able to start, you know, burning coal, we had oil, when that like took off, like that completely changed our society and the boom in what we were able to do in the past, you know, 100, 200 years because of that um, has been incredible, right? Being able to tap into that energy and use that energy. And eventually, you know, we learned that the energy sources that we were using weren't as great and we improved and adapted other ones. So that's all great. And perhaps Bitcoin will, you know, the, the, the potential cheapest energy in the world is solar, is wind, is renewables. Currently, we don't have the best mechanisms for capturing those energy sources, but perhaps innovation because of Bitcoin mining will drive better, um, more optimized systems for capturing solar, wind, and all that, right? Maybe it'll, it'll, maybe the, I don't know, like maybe the computing, you know, innovations in the computing space will make batteries better. Who knows, right? Um, I may, I'm just saying things that don't make any sense, right? So please correct me if I, if I am, but you don't want to necessarily hard stop all innovation. So anyways, there's a lot of arguments for it. There's a lot of arguments against it. You have to do your research to figure out which one you believe or which one you don't believe. Now, back to Tesla, them saying they're not going to accept Bitcoin as a payment. That's totally fine for them to do. I made an argument, a video the other day, uh, saying why you should get paid in Bitcoin, but you shouldn't uh, pay in Bitcoin because Bitcoin is an appreciating asset, right? It's a store of value. And if you trade an appreciating asset for a depreciating asset, like a car, like a Tesla, 
Like that's not a good deal for you, right? If you're the one paying in Bitcoin. Maybe if you get a super huge deal, like if Bitcoin's $50,000, which it's about that right now, um, after it dropped, it dropped like 10 to 15%. It went down to like 45,000 from 55,000. And now it's, it's bounced its way back up. It bounced up and then came down a little bit and it's, it's moving move its way back to, to around 50,000, which is a good thing, right? It's resilient and just crashed completely. But if you can... If if you were to trade your fifty thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin for a fifty thousand dollar Tesla, right, and the Bitcoin is set to appreciate, unless you believe it's not, then that's not a good deal for you. If you believe that it's gonna tank and that fifty thousand is the highest it's gonna be, well, by all means, trade that for a Tesla, right? You can't anymore, but um, in, hypothetically, trade that for a Tesla. But if you believe it's gonna go up, you know, the Tesla is guaranteed to go down in value guaranteed and it's going to cost a lot to maintain it to operate that thing to use it you still got to plug it in you still got to use electricity so if you're in an area where there's more coal fired plants and there's less renewable energy sources well you know you're going to be actually using that resources those more dirty energy to charge your car right so based on where you live actually makes teslas um, or battery powered cars more or less you know more or less environmentally friendly uh, which is interesting but so you shouldn't trade your appreciating asset for a depreciating asset unless you believe you know that they're both depreciating assets and you're gonna get more utility out of the one you traded for anyways um so it's not really that big of a deal if they say we're not going to take it anymore because you know a few months ago tesla invested 1.5 billion dollars in bitcoin and they announced in that same announcement we're not getting rid of our bitcoin position so why would they buy bitcoin and you know it's 1.5 billion dollars they knew about Bitcoin's energy consumption before and they didn't have a problem with it, right? It's not like this is just like news to them. Um, Elon Musk didn't just like casually spend $1.5 billion of his publicly, tra publicly traded company without doing the research, right? If he did, you know, no one should ever t trust him again. I don't really think people should trust him in the first place because, you know, he's his goal is to maximize his profits for his company because he's, you know, he, he's got a, you know, post gains for his shareholders, right? He's got to do things in his share what his shareholders want, right? That's you know part of being a publicly traded company. Um, that you got, you know, if you, if you don't, then your shareholders are, shareholders aren't going to be happy, and they're not going to they're not going to keep investing or keep their money with your company. Um, and he doesn't want that, right? He's been a fan of Tesla a lot longer than he's cared about any sort of cryptocurrency. That's his business. His business is cars. His business is well, his business is Tesla. It's not necessarily cars, um, but um, so that's important to know. So he kept his Bitcoin. He just said, we're not going to take it as payments. So it's like, well, why would he support it then and then not support it now? Right? So you have to ask yourself these questions. And no one knows for sure unless you know Elon. But this wasn't a mistake, right? He, you know, he's running a very successful company. The guy's clearly a very smart guy. He's got a lot of very smart people around him. This is, you know, you don't just tweet out, oh, yeah, we're just not going to accept it anymore because I don't think it's clean enough. Well, what does that even mean? What is clean enough? Right? Um, did he has he done a whole um, due diligence on like clean enough things that they do? Is everything that they do clean enough? Um, so you just gotta think that there are ulterior motives. Are there factors at play? And if you see what happened, a lot of people freaked out and they sold their Bitcoin. Mostly new investors, probably people who don't believe in it as much. Because if you believe in it, what Elon Musk says doesn't matter because you know, he's not God. He's, he, he's just some guy, right? And for every Elon Musk person who doesn't believe it, there's a, someone who, who believes in it, right? And more and more people are getting familiar with crypto. More and more people are investing in crypto. More and more people are, are waking up to the possibilities with it, right? And so what Elon says, yeah, sure, it's great to have an advocate on your side that is in a position of power like, um, like Elon Musk is, but like you don't need it when you have a movement, when you have something that you really believe in, right? And that when you have a whole community of advocates, just go on YouTube and find all the people that really like cryptos and have been doing this for years, right? Like they're not just gonna go away. And if they do, well, you know, that's their choice. But I think it was something like someone said that there's two or three percent of the population has been exposed or has invested in cryptocurrencies of some sort, and that that number is doubling each year. Right, that's, and I think it was, maybe it was, uh, maybe it was Einstein that said it, who knows, Einstein said it, look it up, but the most powerful force in the universe is compound interest, right, so that's the fact that, like, 
two percent, three percent this year becomes six percent next year. And if that doubles again, that's twelve percent. Right? If that doubles again, that's twenty four percent. If that doubles again, that's forty eight percent. And that doubles again, you know, that's ninety six percent. So how you know how many years? Four or five years between before the whole population is exposed to cryptocurrency has has it, or has invested it or has you know taken part in it? Like that's not very long, right? So that's really really powerful. So that's something that really can't be slowed down and is going to continue going on. So Bitcoin may dip now, cryptocurrencies may go down a little bit now in the short term, but the long-term view, if you believe in it, then they're not stopping, right? This is, you know, where we are at today is we're going to be better off in a year, right? If not a year, two years, right? Be forward thinking with it. And that's what I think everyone should be with crypto and Bitcoin, all that kind of stuff is like, don't be swayed by the emotions in the short term, right? I made a video about, um, in one of my other videos, I mentioned how the Greek gods, right? They're gods because they're not as, and people are people because people have short, you know, short focus, short time frames that they live. They have finite lives and they're, they're always, you know, toiling in the emotions and, and turmoil, right? They're so focused on that. And then the gods what made them gods is they could foresee for generations and their plans can carry out over generations. And the humans like Odysseus, right? Um, that were successful, that were remembered as, as legends that was able to challenge the might of the gods, in some in some circumstances, they had that the the characteristic of the god that they think steps ahead, right? They they play the game out forward into the future. Right? They don't just focus on the present, but they think about what am I doing now? How can that influence my future? How could I lay the foundation for future success? Right? How can I make my plan or my trap or my strategy multiple stages? Because they're going against people. So don't be one of the people that looks at that sees the news today and then just sells everything off, right? Um, unless that's what you truly believe, but I don't believe it, and I don't think you should believe that. Uh, see it as an opportunity. The market went down. You believe in Bitcoin. You believe it's going to go up, and it just dropped by 10 or 15 percent. Wow, it's a flash sale. So you have an opportunity to invest money to get more of a return on your money, right? To to buy an asset that you're going to hold for years at a lower price. That's amazing, right? Do the math. Pull out a spreadsheet and see like the return on the investment of that ten to fifteen percent difference. Right? If you were going, if you were thinking, hey, I'm going to buy one bitcoin and pay fifty five thousand dollars for it because there's forty six million millionaires in the world, and there's only twenty one million bitcoin, and I believe that everyone's going to want a bitcoin in the future, so I'm going to get mine now. Fifty five thousand dollars. I think that's a steal. Well, if it went down to forty five, you just saved yourself ten thousand dollars. Do the math on a spreadsheet and see. What that extra ten thousand dollars you put in in Bitcoin, or put it in other coins? Maybe that was like maybe you could take that ten thousand dollars, buy the Bitcoin for forty five, and then put that ten thousand because you're going to put fifty five thousand in it anyways, right? And you can do this with any number. I'm just using this as a you know arbitrary amount, but you could put that in ETH Ethereum. You could put that in you know Cardano. You could put that in you know Dogecoin or any sort of meme coin, right? You could go and pay off your debt with that, right? So you just saved yourself money and you got your Bitcoin. So just think of it as an amazing opportunity, and. You know, it, it's kind of, um, it should give you perspective and pause when you see a, a huge backlash of when one person says something, right? And if there's a huge reaction, if anyone who reacts on just the whims of one person, that's probably not someone that you should, it's probably not someone that you should, I guess, take their advice or their actions at face value. If one tweet from Elon Musk can cause someone to completely change their position. And one tweet that doesn't really mean what people think it means, right? Him saying Tesla is not going to accept Bitcoin doesn't mean he doesn't believe in Bitcoin because he still holds it. He's not selling it off. Now, if, if, if so, like you selling your Bitcoin, why would you sell your Bitcoin if he's not selling his Bitcoin, right? You know, if don't listen to what he says, watch what he does. And it's like, so. You, you shouldn't, right? He's not, it'd be different if he said, if the announcement was Tesla sold all of their Bitcoin, right? And now, and no longer accepts payment in Bitcoin. Tesla is now anti-Bitcoin, right? Then if you believe it, you're like, okay, well, like I believe in Elon Musk. I'm going to like do what, you know, he does because, you know, I think he's smarter than me and, and so on and so forth. But he didn't do that, right? He didn't sell his Bitcoin. So why would you sell your Bitcoin, right? So anyone reacting like that on a whim hasn't thought it through. And you know, like I said, um, there's a lot of craziness out there. You know, the crypto market is new. There's a lot of volatility. It's wild. It's innovative, right? And we're on the cusp of a tremendous transformation, um, technologically, societally, spiritually. Um, there's a lot going on, and so it's really easy to get caught up in the hype, the, the hype, and all that. It's just, you know, my advice: take a step back, 
Don't get caught up in the hype. Don't be just, you know, selling when everyone else sells and buying when everyone else buys. You know, be your own person. Do your own research, right? Look into these things. Don't take claims from celebrities and major news outlets and at face value, right? Go research this stuff. And if you come to the same conclusion, that's great. You're better off because you've actually like questioned it, right? And you've challenged it, and you learn and you've grown and you've supported your argument, right? If you don't believe anything that I'm saying, totally fine, right? Go research it. You know, research some of the says. Find counters to my arguments. Find counters to the points I've made. Tell me about them. That's totally cool with me, right? I, I need to learn too. So the more I learn about people who disagree with me, the better I can formulate my opinions. Maybe it makes me believe what I believe more. Maybe it convinces me to believe what you believe. But you can't do that without going, doing your research, thinking for yourself, and, and you know, learning. So with that, I'm going to close out. I've been rambling on for 20 minutes. But uh, don't take the crash as a bad thing. Take it as a good sign. Right, take it as I heard someone say is take it as a cleanse, like a refresher. Right, the market goes up. You don't want it to keep going up forever. You want a breather so maybe you can get in. Maybe you missed an opportunity and now you have an opportunity to buy back in when things are a little bit lower. Right, and you know what the potential that they could be. So, you know, not investment advice, but take it as a chance to refresh yourself, to refresh your strategy, to buy in if you can, to put some more money in. You're getting things at a deal. You know, shoot, Bitcoin went down to forty-five thousand and back up to fifty in like a matter of a couple hours after after it crashed, right? You could have bought it at 45. If you sold it at 45, then you would have lost your money, right? You could have bought it at 45 and you would have immediately gained some money, right? Or you know, gained a return. That's a good that's a good situation, right? That's an opportunity. Right? I guess when it's uh what someone says like when there's you know when there's blood in the streets, buy, right? Um probably there's probably more to that. But basically, you know, in times of turmoil and chaos, right? That's a time where you need to be like where can I capitalize on this opportunity? Where, where's the opportunity here? Versus like, let me run with everyone else, right? How can you stand out from the crowd? How can you think differently? And that's where you're going to find really cool opportunities. That's where you're going to find the most transformation. At least that's what I think. I'm just some guy on the internet. So with that, uh, thanks for tuning in for the video. Hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully you believe, like I do, that Bitcoin's going up and this was just a great opportunity to get Bitcoin at a better price or other cryptos if you believe in those as well. Um, learn. Hopefully you believe that's a great opportunity to study the market and learn from the market and that uh, you're excited for the future. So with that, if you want more information, stuff like this, videos like this, please like, subscribe. This helps this video get out. This tells me that you like what I'm, do what I'm talking about and I'll do more. And I'm, I'm gonna do more anyways. It doesn't matter if you like it or subscribe it. <laughs> uh, at this point in time, I'm, I'm growing and learning with you. So with that, thank you so much. Have a great one. Peace.